good afternoon from the Universal Orlando Parking Garage. We are headed in today because Halloween Horror Nights stuff. They've put out more props. We still don't have any announcements, which I'm kind of not concerned about, but interested in to find out why we don't have more announcements because the event is fast approaching. It starts September 2nd. Today is August 10th. So like less than a month away and we don't have, we have three announcements and that's it. We don't know any scare zones. We only have three houses. Is it four houses? Three or four houses announced. And it's just like, I don't know. It seems hard to get excited for the event because we don't know what it is. That's one of the reasons that I'm here coming so often to like look at the props going up in the scare zones to kind of like speculate on what's happening. So we're gonna go inside, have a look around, see what kind of props we can see and see what, if we can make any inference as to what's happening at Universal for the scare zones. So today is the first day of school here in town. So it's kind of interesting to see how crowded it is here in City Walk as we're walking in. We'll see once we get into the parks though, because this will be split up among City Walk and Universal and Islands of Adventure. First stop, Universal Studios, Florida. We might head over to Islands to check on the All Hallows Eve boutique, see if they have any new merchandise. All right, right off the bat, we're starting to get some movement here, right outside of Minions Mayhem and in between Minions Mayhem and where Shrek 4D used to be. Like I said, we still don't know what any, have no confirmation as to what these scare zones are gonna be, but we have a very large trust structure in this area. So no lights or anything other than just the trust structure. Then we have a few clues as to the fact that there's gonna be a banner up here. We can kind of see some clamps there. So there will be a banner that kind of spans across this front section here. And maybe a few of the other sections will have some, some attachment points of something. Maybe some more banners, but yeah, we don't know any sort of theme or anything for this scare zone. Yeah, like I said, we do have clamps and these clamps were specifically put here because you can see they're over top of this scrim here. This like deterrent for climbing is what this is. I feel like I'm not sure if I just didn't notice that these speakers were here before or if they're new, but on the construction walls outside of Monsters Cafe, there are some ambient noise speakers which could have been added to help with the ambiance of Halloween Horror Nights, adding in some spooky sounds and stuff like that. But right now they're just playing the background loop of the park. As we get to the area outside of Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon, we're starting to see some food tents pop up, which is very exciting. So these over here will most likely be drink tents, but these will be food tents. So yeah, we don't know anything about menus or anything like that. Not anything too like concrete as far as the theme goes. We're just seeing bricks and siding really and so after reviewing some of the stuff and like looking at some of the stuff online and noticing the shirt designs for this year we are kind of leading towards because this is the 31st year of halloween horror nights here in orlando we're leading towards this being leaning towards this being more of a traditional halloween theme to go with the 31st like the 31st of october so yeah i think it says somewhere on this shirt even like 31st of October, but who knows? You never know. We haven't gotten the announcement yet. We're waiting to hear it. As we head into the New York area, this is where there are a lot of updates, for me at least. So number one, the tribute store is closed in preparation for the Halloween Horror Nights tribute store. And then lots and lots of stuff out here. So let's have a look at the tribute store real quick. And then we will head over and have a look at everything else. So right now everything's been stripped off almost as if the theater had closed. Like there are no, no movie signs, no movie posters or anything like that, no coming soon. But all we've got is the spray paint word closed here where the movie posters used to be. And so our theory was that the idea behind the Halloween Horror Nights tribute store is that they're going to take this theater and kind of give it a haunted past and turn this into the tribute store and it'll be a haunted theater for the tribute store. And we're, we're really starting to see that because they haven't taken down this facade. If, it, if they weren't going to keep the theater theme, this facade would have come down the day that it closed, which was on the 7th, which was a few days ago. So for this area of the park, we don't know what the scare zone is gonna be, of course. We had theorized mutant candy or the, the map, the speculation map that we were looking at, theorized mutant candy. And we're kind of feeling that here. Major Sweets, we've got little Boo up here. Major Sweets Candy Company. And I like the little details here 
where they even gave him a customized license plate that says major suites and the expiration date is 1331 which is not a real date but i like it uh, and then it says it was issued in october so my question is what scare zones or houses were at halloween horror nights 13. you never know uh, let's have a look over at the front too let's see if there's anything on the front oh yeah killer taste major sweets candy company Look at that. Yeah, I can't see anything inside of there though. Nothing really happening that I can see other than a steering wheel. I take that back, there's a few lights inside. So, major suites, let's see what's on the other side. Over here. We're theorizing that this is the old Killer Clowns from Outer Space truck. And then I think it was in uh, Eddie's Revenge last year too. And so in the live show, we talked about this and people are like, it's not corn, they planted bamboo. And I think they might be right. That's pretty, pretty hefty stalk right there. So yeah, bamboo and not corn, but it does look like corn, doesn't it? And this now has a judge's booth sign on it. We've got some speakers underneath the, the netting here, some pumpkins out and about. Pardon our dust as we prepare for Halloween Horror Nights. And some more, more decorations over here. Some large pumpkins. Oh, Major Sweets Candy Company. Almost like a, a booth where they would be selling candy or selling jars of something or pumpkins or something like that. And then there is stairs back here that are leading up to this. So I feel like there's going to be a microphone character up here talking to people in the streets and judging people, judging something. We don't know what they're judging. Maybe I'm guessing candy creations because this is all sponsored by Major Sweets Candy Company. And then we've got some more hay bales and some pumpkins in the back back there. And then this is a booth that it looks like a, uh, a tractor ran into. And you can see Bicentennial Hometown Fall Halloween Festival Parade, a proud sponsor of Major Sweets Candy Company. And we've got some pennants here and some lights and a table in there. Oh, a table that got knocked over by the tractor. And then of course the driver is underneath a covering here. And uh, I have a feeling that his fate, I feel like he's met his demise. He's not doing so good. I do feel like Universal is gonna have to do something about this guy right here because that's where you would attach any sort of attachment to the tractor like a, a lawnmower section or something like that but like somebody could hit their knees on that i know they're trying to block it off with this but i feel like that'll be they just take it off right oh a fog machine over here okay that's good yeah another 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 banner here that says that this is for the halloween festival so from those decorations or set pieces we still have walls up here, but I can smell them doing some asphalt behind there. So I feel like they are hard at work. As far as the mummy goes, still no word on this. They do have the queue set up outside with umbrellas. They are ready to open out here. But like I said, we still have black plastic over top of all the windows. And I'm really feeling like they're not gonna open it with that black plastic there. Plus there are no team members out here like preparing anything. So I'm feeling like not today. Something else for Halloween Horror Nights though is, we've got this little pumpkin up here. A little like a uh, little spooky pumpkin guy on the, on the street posts. I don't see any other of these little spooky pumpkin guys. We'll keep our eye out. Maybe there are more, but oh yeah, there's a couple more over here. Also out in front of the mummy, we've got some more hay bales, some more pumpkins, some more bamboo, some uh, fall foliage. This is corn though. Like this is what corn looks like. You can see this bamboo is very, very similar looking to the corn. A little bit shorter leaves, I think. And then of course there is some form of body underneath here, some form of spooky person that uh, has met their demise. So funny, cause on the way in, I was like thinking that there was gonna be a lot of people in here because there was a lot of people heading in, but it's so quiet. They haven't turned the music back on after Sing It finished, after the acapella group finished. And so nothing, nothing's really going on. We do have, Another spooky pumpkin guy up here. And the lights are still there. They haven't added the bulbs yet. Yeah, they are stringed out lights. 
in lots of places across the New York area. Last few things we see are some spooky pumpkin guys on the light posts, and then a, uh, of course, a tarp covering up some form of, of bloody action, some, some goriness next to these, these hay bales. It is kind of strange being in Universal and there's no music happening. Like, I don't know why there's no background music. I thought they had just turned it off for the show, but they didn't, there's just no background music. Also, we have another tent here. This is probably gonna be a, a drink tent. That'll be kind of a theme through Halloween Horror Nights is drink tents, because they a lot of people like to come here and drink. So for the house that we believe is going to be entered in over here by Fast and Furious, uh, originally I had theorized that maybe the entrance might be down there in San Francisco. Something went up last night that has canceled my theory, and so now I believe that the entrance and possibly exit will be right here for this house. We still don't know what this house is gonna be. Some theories floating around, but we don't know. As we head into Fisherman's Wharf in the San Francisco area, like I said last time, we've got some lights and some speakers on these towers in here, but then they added a big set piece back here. This is what led me to believe that there's not going to be an entrance or exit to the Halloween Horror Nights house from Fast and Furious. Here where the exit to Fast and Furious is, because there's this very large set piece that will be part of a scare zone. And from the looks of it, kind of feeling like a witch's scare zone, right? Kind of looks very witchy. Does anybody know like ancient ruins? Ruins? This one looks like it says, hey, I do like that this is a very large stage that somebody could be moving around on and doing performances, have, like creating some sort of spell or cauldron or like potion in this cauldron. Came around the backside to see, and it looks like these are doors here. So somebody could bust out of the doors in the center of the stage and scare people or like, you know, make an entrance or like they, okay, all right, hold on, follow me on this one. All right, so lots of speakers, uh, subwoofers. So this could be a mic performer that what they do is they open up these doors and they make an entrance. And then as they're leaving, they can leave through here or maybe they have somebody bring out a sacrifice or something over here, or like a, a victim. Interesting, right? I'm excited to see what this will be and like what, how they utilize this stage as part of the performance. Also kind of feels like they're still waiting to add something up there. So over here across from King's Cross, we do have something. We don't know if it's gonna be drinks or food, but this is a menu board right here, a themed menu board. And then we've got a few more, oh yeah, with the runes, and they're gonna be lit up at night. Oh, let's get a closer look. Yeah, look at this. You can see how there's this white plexiglass behind these, and that kind of signifies that these will be lit up at night. Making a real ambiance over here. I like it a lot. Yeah. Oh, and this is a bar back here. Okay. So now we know it's not gonna be food, but it will definitely be a bar. Kinda looks like it's gonna be a full bar too. Wow, look at this. This is gonna be the place to go for sure. I think that the lines will be very small back here because that's one of the things about Halloween Horror Nights is everybody's here to have some drinks and to have fun. And so you're always looking for the bar that has the shorter line. I feel like this one will be it. So although I am kind of sad that it's not gonna be food back here, I do love a good themed area. So thumbs up in my book, Universal. I do like that I'm guessing witches right outside of Diagon Alley, right? We know that there are no scare actors or scare zones back there, but we do know that Diagon Alley is open during Halloween and Horror Nights. No scary characters or anything, but I like that they're kind of like, you know, maybe witches, I don't know, who knows? It could be, uh, I don't know, Vikings maybe? Uh, but I feel like witches right here outside of Diagon Alley. As we're headed out of the London waterfront, Fear Factor stage is back there, Men in Black over here. There is a food tent that they've set up over here. I'm gonna see if there's anything as far as, I'm sure the menu's not out, but Let's go have a look and see. There is not, but there's this cool little pumpkin design on the front of it. That's super fun. I like that a lot. So I'm excited to see what the actual menu will be. So we believe that this one will be food because maybe it's gonna be a pumpkin themed booth, like all pumpkin foods. Yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. So I meant to say, we know that that one's gonna be food because in events past that they've had, that's usually a food booth, not just a drink booth. However, over here by Fear Factor, which we don't know the name of the show, but we are fairly certain there's gonna be a show here during Halloween Horror Nights, there is a tent here, and this will more than likely be a drink tent. Nothing really to update on the Fear Factor stage. 
They might be doing some more truss work back there, but more than likely they are just rehearsing somewhere offsite. Over here by the MIB gear shop, one thing that we're gonna be looking out for in the next few weeks is they'll start putting out the portals, which will be the entrances to the houses that are over here. Uh, also, the construction walls are gone and they have since replaced all of the concrete here. And it kind of feels like maybe it was a water issue that they needed to work on because a lot of water areas here, a lot of like sewer manhole covers and water manhole covers. All right, we've made it over to the Springfield area of the park. We're just basically walking through this because there's nothing Halloween Horror Nights related in here. And right, as we get past the DeLorean and the train from Back to the Future, we're seeing something, so it's a facade here. Kind of looks like blood splatters on the outside of it, but this will be a food area, I believe. This looks like a food area. There's a tent behind this facade. Don't really have any, any other sort of indication as to what's going on here. It looks interesting though. This looks like it's gonna be some very large graphic, as well as these will be graphics and these will be menus over here. Hmm, I wonder, I wonder what it's gonna be. What do you guys think? It's kind of nondescript right now, isn't it? Well, so this next booth I should mention is just outside of Central Park. So this will be a scare zone. And this kind of feels like it kind of gives it away, right? Like this is all scarecrow themed stuff, like a barn with some spooky scarecrows on it. So this will be another food booth, I believe. Yeah, it's kind of indicative of food booths there. And it's kind of looking like it's a scary pumpkin scarecrow themed. Yeah, no other theming out here though. So we're still not 100% sure, but it's nice that there's gonna be a lot of food. As we're heading further into kid zone, we're seeing SpongeBob store pants here. And then this kind of feels like witches, of course, which I guess that means that the scarecrow thing isn't really indicative of what this scare zone will be because this seems like witches and a lot of the runes and things, or vampires even, that were over by San Francisco are kind of also here. So what do you guys think? Now that we're a little bit further in, do you guys think that it will be witches or vampires over there? So this is basically the same symbol that was on like this, this word right here that looks like it says like Kong almost, Cog. Uh, that was on the bar that we found back in the San Francisco area. So that begs the question, is it witches or is it vampires? Cause this, this feels like vampires or this feels like witches, right? Like potions and cauldrons and things like that. It's not too clear, but I think it might be cauldrons of some kind, like experiments. Kind of right across from this booth, there's another one. This will most likely be a drink booth. So, you know, there are gonna be drink booths all over the place. As we're just outside of ET, there typically are uh, three house entrances here and they don't have anything set up just yet. All right, so we're headed out of kid zone now and we're headed back towards this, I don't know if it would be witches or vampires. I'm, I'm leaning towards witches, food booth. But also I should point out that over here at kid zone pizza, they usually have pizza fries back here. So this will be another food location during Halloween Horror Nights. As we head into the Central Park Scare Zone area, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through it and then walk back this way through it because the, the, the flow of traffic is much better coming this direction. I'm right, back out here at the entrance to Central Park, right next to Central Park Crepes, uh, looking at the Transformers over there. And where we were was over by Animal Actors and we are walking towards Animal Actors now, heading this way through the Scare Zone. But before we get in there, I wanted to point out that over here to the side, is another, I'm guessing, food booth or drink booth, kind of leaning towards drinks based on everything that I can see inside of there. Well, maybe not. Looks like we've got some sort of frozen concoction here. We've got a flat top in there. Yeah, some heat lamps for French fries, I'm assuming. So I think that uh, this will be a food location, as well as drinks, of course. It's kind of like a sugar skull look to it. Uh, Day of the Dead type action happening. I do like the colors, and I'm hoping that they really pop at night if they throw a black light on them. This booth does wrap around in this direction. I'm not seeing anything else as far as theming goes, but I feel like you'll order it over here and then they'll pick it up over here. Scariest thing out here. There he is, SpongeBob SquarePants. And Patrick, of course. So we're headed to the front of Hollywood because like I said, it's better to come through. They have, they kind of arrange these scare zones so that their your, your forward travel is from the front of the park. All right, back here at the front of Hollywood, 
heading into the Nettlewood Cemetery, just to give you guys an idea. Hello Kitty store right there. Uh, what is this, Today Cafe, Universal Studio store. Right around the corner is the Despicable Me Minion Mayhem. So basically, if you head into the park and make a right, you're headed into Hollywood here. And we're just having a look. It looks like they've added some, some shrubbery almost, some like twigs and sticks and moss and leaves, viney type things here, as well as some speakers and a few other set pieces here. Like, I don't think I've seen this one before. Definitely never seen this tree over here before. I do like the positioning of this one because I feel like somebody can be coming around the corner and somebody can be hiding in this archway here. Just kind of pop out and scare them. A few other things here and there, a couple of extra archways and planters, as well as, of course, vines and sticks and trees added to the set pieces and moss. There's a door right here. And if you look down here on the ground, there is this pedal. So these pedals are triggers that a scare actor can step on and create a sound or trigger a sound. Maybe coming from under here where a speaker might be hidden. Yeah, last time we were here, we didn't have all these vines or moss and twigs and things on this. Also, these like curtains weren't hanging here. And if we look inside, there is a speaker and another one of those triggers in there. Nothing too significant in the Hollywood area aside from just the, the branches and twigs and a few extra little set pieces added here and there. So, like I said, we were kind of leaning towards vampires here, but nothing, nothing announced as of right now. But I didn't want to leave Hollywood without going into the Five and Dime because I believe that they have moved some of the Halloween Horror Nights merchandise over here. We had talked a little bit about this the last video and it is still available where you can have your photo in the Halloween Horror Nights Tribute Store. Let's see what we've got in here. Ooh, there he is, Creature from the Black Lagoon. We've got some, some spooky candle scents in here. We've got a Horrors of Blumhouse shirt and of course, Christmas ornament. We've got the shirt that I'm wearing right now. It says every day is Halloween. Halloween Horror Nights 2022 bag. I didn't see these before. They're like lanyard, like ticket holders. It says every day is Halloween. It's kind of like a faux leather. And it's got a retractable thing, so you can clip it on your belt. And then it says Halloween Horror Nights 2022 on it. And these are $14. Or if you wanted to get a lanyard and have a little lanyard pouch on it, they've got both orange and red available. And these are $8. And now you do still have to buy the lanyard and those. Like if you want to have the complete package of a lanyard and the lanyard pouch. They have these glass cups up here. And these are $12. We got kind of traditional Halloween characters on them. Ghost, pumpkin, black cat, uh, jack-o'-lantern, scarecrow, skeleton, and witch. We have the, the Universal Classic Monsters cup. We've got this Universal Classic Monsters artist series shirt. And like we talked about, this is Anubis in the center here. Oh, I like this like mummy snake. That's a fun idea. We got this little shirt that we got for Jackson here. I didn't notice this, but they have leggings. How much are the leggings? $35 with little boo right on the booty butt. And then we've got, these are plastic cups for $10. These are cool. I like these a lot. Oh, this is something that I hadn't seen before was the Christmas ornament. It says Halloween Horror Nights 2022. Every day is Halloween 31. So this is Halloween Horror Nights 31 for $20. And they have this tall shot glass too. And this is $12. And then of course this coffee tumbler with just kind of like a metal, almost like an enamel pin type thing on it for $29. I think it says that it keeps hot stuff hot and cold stuff cold. Oh, and then this was the expensive flannel shirt. Every day is Halloween, the same design that I have on my shirt right now, but it is $75 on a flannel button up shirt. And then it says Halloween Horror Nights 2022 on the front of it. All right, I was, I was kind of stalling on my way out of Universal Studios because I thought maybe Universal would make an announcement on Twitter or something today. Nothing happened yet. Who knows, it might happen on the drive home or something like that. But it was still a fantastic day. There's so much to see out of Universal Studios now. A lot of food boosts, a lot of props out in all the different scare zones. Now we're just waiting to hear what the scare zones actually are. So like I said, hopefully that'll be soon as the event is starting on September 2nd, coming up very quickly. All the tickets are on sale right now. You can get all kinds of different options for your passes. You can get VIP tours, you can get Unmasking the Horror tours, which those were actually sold out for a little bit and then they opened up some more inventory. So 
those are back available again. If you're unfamiliar with Unmasking the Horror, it is a lights on, scare actor free tour of the houses during the day. So you can either do a three house tour or a six house tour. Uh, that won't be all of the houses as there are 10 houses predicted, but you will be able to go through six or three depending on like which tour you book. It's a really, it's a really neat experience for anybody that is maybe too scared to go or like unsure if they were or can handle it. Cause you can see everything with the lights on. You can see where the scare actors come from. You can see like get familiar with the houses. And this is also something we'll be doing with Jen this year as she is pregnant now, so she will not be going through the houses. She is still gonna go to the event and like try some of the food and things like that, but she's just not comfortable going through the houses while pregnant. She doesn't want any sort of issues or anything like that. Should be a great, great event and just excited to learn more. So all in all, a fantastic day. And with that being said, we're off. We'll see y'all tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price. <laughs>